What I've noticed, uh, I'm going to move over here because the uh, lights are a little too bright. OK, thanks. Um, is that there's a lot of confusion around digital twins. And it has to do with the, the discrete industries and the process industries. So in the, uh, at a high level, these digital twins look very similar. You make something, uh, and uh, you design something, you make it, and then you support it afterwards. But when you get down a little deeper, the business process is a lot different. And I've been a lot of conferences and talked to a lot of people, and, and people seem to be talk, talking past each other, meaning someone from the discrete industries will be talking about a digital twin uh, and trying to explain it to someone in the process industries, and they're really not communicating at all, and vice versa. So uh, the, my uh, introductory presentation is an attempt to uh, clarify some of that confusion um, and then, of course, the rest of the session will focus on the process industries. So uh, this is our definition of a digital twin. Um, the, uh, uh, in the focus of what I want to talk about is around the uh, 3D model that's there and the business processes. So um, uh, each area, each type of digital twin manages business processes but then also provides uh, information and people navigate to that information through the uh, 3D model. So we look up in the upper right hand corner, um, you'll see uh, an upgrade project going on. There are now uh, current existing three pumps and they're adding a fourth pump. So from the viewpoint of the discrete industries, they're focused on that pump and the bill of materials for the pump, maybe some uh, procedures for maintenance, but it's all around the pump and the motor attached to that pump. Uh, when we go over to the process industries, there's a more that application and how does that pump fit in the larger picture of the entire plant and the pumps nearby. All right. So uh, just to drill into the the, the model for the process injuries a little bit, and then I'll do the same for the discrete. Um, we like to show circles, uh, Venn diagram, because uh, each one of those circles represents a set of business processes. And in design and build, there's a set of business processes, then you have handover, and you go to operate and maintain, uh, and the business processes and operate and maintain are very different. Uh, there's a little overlap for handover. Uh, that green area is, looks large on the slide, but it's actually probably a, a sliver. And this is how we represent the plant asset mass, uh, life cycle rather than chevrons. Chevrons to me uh, is just a path, but it doesn't well represent the business processes that occur in each one of those domain areas. So. We find that Digital Twin uh, in design and build manages usually asset information around the design of the plant uh, and sharing that information through uh, the design and construction uh, to minimize rework so the plant gets delivered on time uh, in budget uh, and in spec, you know, the key KPIs for an EPC, and then comes on stream sooner uh, so that the end user benefits with revenue uh, earlier uh, time to benefit. On the uh, operate and maintain side, we see the benefits more around operational performance, preventing unplanned downtime, for example. With less unplanned downtime, you have higher revenue and a safer plant. So uh, uh, that's the general flow for the uh, process industries. And just to give a couple of examples, You'll see on the left-hand side a list of, uh, of uh, applications uh, uh, for the digital twin uh, use cases. And then there's an example of a, uh, of a screenshot from Bentley Systems uh, plant site. Uh, and again, the key benefit is with the digital twin, the plant for the end user, the plant comes online sooner, you get higher revenue. Uh, I'm not going to go through the use cases. Um, uh, and then for operate and maintain, 
Uh, here we have some screenshots for Unity, who will uh, present later on. Matt will present for Unity. Uh, there, uh, what I like about this is you see uh, operating data and data about the equipment uh, that has to do with operate and maintain. Again, a list of use cases. I'm not going to go through with them. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what we mean for a digital twin and operate and maintain. Now I'm going to go over to discrete industries. Uh, here I have three uh, uh, circles. Uh, the design one is darkened because, uh, quite frankly, uh, design has been using simulation for decades. I don't want to just rename what's been around for decades a digital twin, so I'm going to skip over design. Uh, that's been around for a while. Um, we have manufacturing. We see digital twins being applied to designing and commissioning the assembly line in manufacturing. So we have assembly line commissioning. That means uh, uh, it, it, when I'm not talking about the ring out where you, you figure out if uh, tag 101 is really assigned to the first uh, temperature gauge or not, uh, more around the control program. So does the robot swing around and smash into another robot, you know, two, two robot arms hit, or does a robot arm swing around and take out a, a girder? Uh, or column, rather. You don't want that to happen. That's all very bad. So uh, it it's, does the virtual commissioning for the control programs for the most part. Uh, and then that avoids rework and delays and faster time to benefit, meaning the plant comes on sooner. Then after manufacturing, we see digital twins applied to the product rather than the assembly line. And we see servitization. Uh, that's remote monitoring. Uh, uh, tell the client when something's uh, not going right. Um, and just, a, again, a couple of quick screenshots to give you a sense for what those digital twins look like. Uh, and some use cases on the left side, again. Uh, this particular one comes from Siemens, uh, who's uh, big into uh, uh, digital twins for assembly plants. Uh, the one on the left is for an automotive assembly line. Uh, uh, that is very complex uh, uh, installation, design, commissioning. So uh, digital twins have a lot of benefit there. Uh, they, the scheduling of, a, of a, uh, a, a turnover for a new, new uh, model year of an automotive, that uh, 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 design, commissioning, installation, it's scheduled in 15 minute in increments. And I'll just remind you that on a typical automotive assembly line, a car is made roughly once every minute. So if you get that assembly line on, uh, you know, up a day earlier, that's a lot of new cars. Uh, and the one on the right is uh, uh, another type of assembly line, uh, not automotive related. So it goes beyond just automotive, uh, though the key uh, use cases in in uh, automotive assembly plants. The servitization case story is pretty powerful. Uh, for the most part, this is for intelligent uh, equipment that can be uh, monitored in the field. So uh, just to explain the chart, the left uh, uh, y-axis is revenue, uh, and the uh, x-axis is the product life cycle from introduction uh, into the field and the sales. Uh, in first initial sales, and you have a usually a high growth period, and then it gets matured. Maybe there's a replacement product, and you see a decline. Um, that is the normal uh, product life cycle from a revenue viewpoint for an OEM. When you add surfetization, now you're selling a service where you're monitoring the asset in the field. Uh, there's a maybe a quarterly fee or an annual fee for that. Uh, of course, the piece of equipment is in the field long after the last model of that particular product is sold. Uh, so there's a, a huge potential for added revenue. Uh, and it's, it's uh, not unusual to have a business case where the revenue for that product or that model is doubled with uh, servitization. So uh, this is where they're, they're charging that annual fee. and. Uh, 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 
notifying the customer when either something's going wrong with it, it's about to fail, or sometimes it can be operator trading issue. The operator is not quite operating the equipment optimally and uh, needs a little training to, to make it run better. Um, so that is where we see digital twins uh, successfully being applied in the discrete industries. So kind of in summary, uh, you know, this, my pres introductory presentation is really focused on kind of showing the different use cases in discrete and process to try to eliminate some of that confusion. So if you're talking to someone who's from the, I don't know, jet engine industry, uh, and you happen to be operating a plant, uh, there may be some lessons to be learned between the two of you, but I just uh, want to clarify where there may be some disconnects. Uh, maybe you can have a better conversation going forward. Um, at this point, I'd, uh, that's the end of my presentation, uh, and I'd like to bring up the folks from OQ uh, to talk about uh, their application uh, in the uh, upstream oil and gas industry. Uh, thank you.